Hey guys, leaving my morning clinic today and it's like 11 a.m. Just wanna make a video for like six scheduled patients when I checked last night. And then I checked this morning and there was only four now. And out of those four, only one patient showed up, which is like kind of annoying and sad when you're a physician and you have like a student with you who's interested in this specialty. So like me, I'm interested in pediatric neurology. I didn't really get a lot of exposure, so it makes me sad because I really, really want to learn more and interact with these kids. Everyone's just missing their appointments and I know everybody has like their own reasons but come on people try to go to your appointments because you don't know if there's a student there who's like really trying to learn from you and from the doctor that you're seeing. Hey guys good morning. It's Tuesday morning participating in my first kind of virtual visit day all day today. Patients in the morning, patients in the afternoon from basically <laughs> basically 8 a.m to 5 p.m i'm here at home and i have my little fancy shirt on and then me and winston are uh in you know sweats on the bottom this is my first time doing this i love it obviously this is how it essentially goes so you log in you log in on your laptop to this thing called doxy me and you essentially have a three-way call to the patients and the doctor's there. It's basically what you would do in clinic, except you're all through Zoom or whatever. And it's really interesting to see how these neurologists do their neuro exam through this laptop. So I am working with this doctor who specializes in epilepsy in children. So it's really interesting to see how he goes about his physical exam through these virtual visits. Neuro exam is pretty extensive, and I think I will put a video in of a full neuro exam that I will do with you guys. One patient didn't show up, maybe two didn't, and the third one, we got her on the phone, but mom couldn't figure out how to get online and actually sign in so we can have this virtual chat. So she just got rescheduled to come back in person on Friday. So it's been kind of a slow morning. We are waiting for our 11 o'clock appointment right now. So I am at home, gonna take my dog out, maybe get some food and then meet back up with him at 11. And I'll be spending all of Thursday morning and evening with this physician, so it's gonna be great. Just realized that I have a quiz on Thursday, so. Hey guys, so today we're gonna film the neuro exam. So I just got off my neuro rotation. I thought it'd be fun to film this. And we have another special guest who you all know, Grant. Hey guys. And he's gonna be our patient today. I'm just gonna go through the typical neuro exam that we will do on patients. We're just gonna start from head to toe. First thing I like to start off with are the eyes. Grab this little pen here and it's a light. And we're just gonna see the pupils and how they react. So this is kind of testing optic nerve, which is cranial nerve two. I'll just shine this in the eye and see, okay. If his pupils constrict, yeah, they do. And then you want to see if you shine the light in one eye, if it constricts in the other, because that is a normal exam finding. Yeah, perfect. Next thing I want to do is check eye muscles. So we're going to do what's called the H movement. So Grant, I want you to follow my pen without moving your neck. So just using your eye. I was going to say eye muscles, but just using your eye. And you want to make this H movement because it will test all of those ocular muscles. And then at the end, you just want to go zoom in. Next thing that I want to check is going to be ears. So I want to check rustling of the ears. So that's cranial nerve eight. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to close your eyes and tell me which ear you hear my finger rustling in. Ready? Left. Right. Both. Perfect, so that means they're intact. Next thing I wanna check are some mus or some nerves around the face. To tell patients we're gonna make funny faces from here on out. Yep, so big smile, that's gonna test cranial nerve seven, which is facial nerve. Blow your cheeks out, don't let me puff the air out, good. Raise your eyeballs really big, nice. Uh, shut your eyes really tight, awesome. And I want you to push your head against my hand and you wanna do that on both sides and then Resist my hands. Awesome. 
So that's cranial nerve 11, the one with the neck and the shoulders. So that's accessory. Accessory. Thank you. <laughs> A couple other funny faces. Grant, I want you to stick your tongue out at me and wiggle it side to side and then open real wide and say, ah, uh. uh. awesome. Awesome. Okay, cool. So that was going to be a couple of nerves, right? So that's cranial nerve 10, vagus nerve, uh, cranial nerve 12, which is hypoglossal as well. And nine glossopharyngeal. Nine glossopharyngeal is all about the tongue. All about the tongue. Um, we're not going to test cranial nerve one usually because that's going to test your smell. You really need to test it like in something like common syndrome, then you're going to have to sniff like coffee or some peppermint and that, those are really strong smells that patients will be able to detect. Right. Going from here, let's go ahead and check muscles and muscle tone. So mm -hmm. I just want you to make this and then resist me. So, okay. Obviously he doesn't have good form there. No, <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> What's wrong? Okay, well, now push me. Table. All right, nice. And then let's do the same with the legs. Resist me, okay. Now pull against me, awesome. So good muscle tone with all of that. Next we're gonna check proprioception. So I'm gonna have Grant close his eyes mm -hmm. and put his fingers out like this. And I'm gonna test if he feels my fingers, one and two, if he knows which direction I'm putting them. Which finger? Middle finger. Thumb. Okay. Ring finger down. Good. So he's got intact proprioception. Next is going to be reflexes, which is my favorite part. This is a reflex hammer, everyone. I have a very special one. It's rose gold. We'll do reflexes. First ones I like to start with because they're the easiest is patellar reflex. So that's at the knee. And a good tip to know is that when your patients aren't really reflexive, you have them do this movement and you like pull um, against your hands. And that kind of takes the focus away from these muscles here. Okay. But only right when they're about to hit the reflex do you have them do that. Right. Not okay. continuously. And I like to use this side of the reflex hammer versus that side. And then we'll find where the patella is and whack it right under there. And this is the reason why I'm sitting up on the counter right now. We have to make sure the patient has their feet off the ground. So that was a little baby one. Let's try again. Another little baby one. Awesome. <laughs> that was hyper reflexive. So let's try the other side. Not very good with my left hand. Little baby one, awesome. So that is the patellar reflex. Let's go to the Achilles. What you wanna do is lift the heel up so that this is kind of stretched. And then the Achilles is right here at the back and you should feel a little um, twitch. Awesome. Try this one. Awesome. I also need this for one more thing called the Babinski. All right, so when you look at the reflex hammer, there's gonna be two parts to it. There's gonna be these with kind of like the rubbery sides. This is going to be for reflexes. The other side has a pointy edge and this is going to be to test your Babinski. And remember guys, Babinski is going to be something we don't want to see in our adults. And that's when you stroke the foot from the heel to the toe. If the toes go up, that's positive and that's abnormal. So you're going to want to see them go down in adults. In babies, that's okay because the nerves haven't are fully developed yet. So let's try this on Grant. Watch the toes. Did you guys see that? They, w they went down. Yeah. The brachioradialis reflex. And so it's gonna be here toward on the wrist or more towards the wrist and then more laterally onto to the side and you'll feel these tendons. And you're just gonna wanna hit your fingers and you'll watch the hand kind of twitch. Good. So that's brachioradialis. And then we're gonna move up here to the antecubital fossa, which is this section here. And mm -hmm. you're also gonna wanna feel for that tendon and then hit there and again you'll watch the hand kind of jump you see that awesome that's all with the reflex hammer now i'm going to test um, proprioception which is kind of like the cerebellum's main task this is what we're going to do so i'm going to have grant keep his eyes open mm -hmm. and i want him to follow my finger touch my finger and then touch his nose and then just keep playing this game with me okay Ready? Go ahead, put your finger on your nose. Touch my finger. Back to nose. Awesome. So as you can see, he's a little coordinated and he's got a working cerebellum. So things you're looking for on that exam, if it were abnormal, is something called dysmetria. My fingers came through like this and were very uncoordinated and, and would maybe overshoot her fingers or undershoot. That would be indicative of a cerebellar disorder. Right. 
Next, we always want to check a gate. Grant, walk across the room, just a regular gate. Awesome. And then I want you to walk back towards me, heel toe, heel toe. And again, this is gonna be all about the cerebellum, which is the little brain in the back of the very large brain that you have. And many of you guys have seen this on the side of the freeway um, with the copper too, because when you drink alcohol, it can really mess up your cerebellum. I want you to walk on your tiptoes okay. across the room. Good. Walk back just on your heels. Awesome. That's the end of the neuro exam. And just, just to clarify guys, there's a lot more maneuvers you can do for a neuro exam, but a lot of this is focused on what the patient's presenting with. So if there's certain things that, for example, cerebellar issues, there's more tests you can do to test that. But again, we're just showing you the basic workup for any given patient. If you have any questions on the neuro exam definitely dm me you know where to find me and thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video good luck